Hey guys, it is me, Jacqueline. For today's video, I'm going to talk about arcs and what they are and how to receive them. I've been asked this sort of question a million times and so I thought it would be such a great idea to just make it into one video. This is sort of just based on my personal experience and I hope this is informative and helpful. If you have any other questions or comments that you want to be sort of reassured on, leave them down below. I respond to every single comment so don't you worry, I will definitely respond. So anyway, let's get on to this video because it's going to be a lot of information. Let's talk about what arcs are and who exactly they are sent to specifically. Arcs are advanced readers copies. They are books that are actually sort of pre-published, you know, before the actual publication of a specific book and they are sent out to reviewers, librarians, bookstore owners to sort of get a buzz and feedback on the book before it is published. Arcs are also sent out not only to receive the feedback but for the librarians and bookstore owners to see if they want to actually sell or have that book in their shop or library and so generally these arcs are really beneficial for publication companies. So of course not every sort of upcoming book release will have a arc attached to it. Certain companies might not release arcs if it is a concluding book in a series which does make sense because you don't want spoilers to go out for the sort of final moments in a series. Also some book companies might not give out arcs or not even sort of produce arcs if it does get a little bit too costly for them. Yet again, that does make sense because arcs genuinely are really only for reviewer purposes. Yet again, like I said, they're supposed to really help buzz sort of flow around a book and maybe help librarians and bookstore owners figure out if they want to have that book in their store. Sometimes I have seen arcs being put on sale, but that actually is illegal. Arcs are not the final copies. You cannot sell them. And so that's why it can be a little bit costly for book companies to distribute arcs but I do feel like it is beneficial because in general it does get the book out there which is exactly what they want. Now arcs can be of two different sources. They can be an e-arc or an electronic arc or they could be a physical arc. I find no matter what the easiest arc to get or version to get is an e-arc just because it is less cost effective for companies to sell out e-arcs and so more likely they will have more e-arcs rather than physical arcs. Like I said they might only produce a certain amount of physical arcs so they want to make sure they actually send it to people and they might have a sort of qualification for that. So in general I do feel like even if people don't have a channel or anything like that you can still easily get e-arcs. I love e-arcs and physical books the same. I don't really have a preference when it comes to reading and reviewing. I think they are both awesome sort of arcs in general. I think it's just the book and not really the format for me. But if you do want to receive eARCs and you don't have a specific e-reader, if you have an iPhone or any sort of phone that you can get the Kindle app, you can definitely do that and use it for any of the more sort of book arc websites which I will be discussing when we're talking about eARC specifically and that will be sort of an easy way for you to receive arcs without having to buy a specific e-reader in order to receive eARCs. A key idea to keep in mind when it comes to arcs whether it be a eARC or a physical arc is reviewing. If you want to receive arcs reviewing is key and if you do receive arcs it is so important to review yet again that is the whole entire reason they are set out in order to sort of get a buzz or word back about these books. I am a little bit far behind when it's coming on ARCs, but I always, always say I will read and review every single ARC I receive that's really important to me. Whether I do a video review that's a little bit different, but I always do reviews on Goodreads and stuff like that. I always send feedback if I do like something like NetGalley. It's just very important to review. And if you do want to receive ARCs, that's a major way to start sort of branching into it because I started reviewing 
really last year and that's when I started to receive a lot of books for review. I started to receive more arcs and I feel like yet again reviewing is key when it comes to arcs. I'm going to first start with e-arcs just because I feel like these are the easiest to obtain and it doesn't really matter if you have a platform so I feel like really anyone can read and receive e-arcs but if you do want to see my physical arc sort of advice I'll leave the timestamp for that down below in the description box. Now there are a ton of different sort of e-arc websites where you can receive and review different e-arcs. I'll leave all the ones I can find down below in the description box. I am only familiar with one of them and that's because I personally use it and that is NetGalley. NetGalley is seriously wonderful. I would highly recommend joining. I'm completely satisfied with it which is why I've only used NetGalley because I don't really see any other purpose to use any sort of website. NetGalley has the arcs I am most anticipating on it and so yet again I'm really satisfied with it so I haven't really branched out. It's really easy to use. I find that they have various different genres. They are constantly adding different sort of arcs to the website. Like I said earlier the key to eARCs is reviewing and that's sort of what NetGalley is all about. I can't really say what the other sort of eARC websites are like because I haven't used them. But with NetGalley, they have a thing where if you have a 80% review rate, you will be more likely to receive the arcs you want. So a tip I have if you're just joining NetGalley is to go back, sort of visit the older books they have on their website, find ones that do interest you and request them. If you receive them, review them and get your total up to 80%. And then you can sort of try at the other ones. I find you don't necessarily need to have a specific platform or specific job for NetGalley, they're really looking for people to just read and review their stuff, which is awesome. And yet again, I would just highly recommend it if you're looking into eARCs. Also with eARCs, you can email publication companies for specific eARCs. They would probably be more likely to give you eARCs than physical copies, so that could be beneficial if you're interested in a anticipated book release. And so you email and find the company that is going to bring out that book release and ask or request for an eARC, you might actually receive it over receiving a physical book. You can do the same thing for physical arcs, which I will talk about later and exactly what you should or whatever suggested things to say in the email, but that is also another way to receive arcs as well as giveaways. Now on to physical arcs, which are harder and more desirable, I find. I do think if you don't have a platform or aren't specifically in the industry, these will be harder to receive. Not impossible, just harder to receive. So the first way you could receive a physical arc is through giveaways. This is an awesome opportunity because it doesn't matter if you are in the industry or have a platform. All you have to do is enter the giveaway and there is a possibility you can win the arc you desire. Now, it isn't a definite yes you will receive this book. It's just gives you a chance to receive a arc you might be wanting. Giveaways are hosted on all different platforms. If you are trying to find a giveaway for a book you have in mind, all you have to do is Google your book's title and the word giveaway and things will pop up for you. Giveaways are featured on a lot of different platforms. They can be found here on BookTube. They can be found on Twitter, Bookstagram, bloggers have a lot of giveaways featured and also Goodreads which is personally one of my favorite ways to enter giveaways. Goodreads has a specific section where you can sort of browse depending on the genre through sort of giveaways they have featured and you can enter them which is so easy. I can do that for hours. I sort of get lost in it but yet again if you are specifically looking for a book I would just recommend googling it, the title, and the word giveaway. The next method I have is going to book events which is such a fun and wonderful way to receive ARCs. Now there are specific book events that are for people in the book industry that aren't open to the public. The one I'm thinking in mind is BA. You probably heard of it. I went actually last year and it was a lot of fun and that's a really great opportunity if you are in the industry to sort of pursue a sort of book event like that. But there are other sort of book events that are open to the public. It doesn't matter if you're in the industry or not. And those events are BookCon, BookItCon, and you can really just 
search in your area for different book events. I know there are a ton coming up in the future which I'm really excited for and in general I would highly recommend to go and check out book events because it is such a fun way to receive ARCs. The final method I have is to directly email the publication company or author regarding an ARC copy you want to receive. I feel like this is the most effective but I do have to say I do also feel like you should have a platform or be in the industry in order to do this because yet again physical art copies are usually tended for people that will really get word and buzz out there about the books that they have arcs for. So even though people that aren't in the industry can't really do this, I do feel like this is the most effective way. So I personally have actually emailed publication companies and authors in request of arcs. I have also received arcs I did not ask for and also I am on certain publication companies mailing lists which means I will actually be sent arcs or sent books in general that they might think I will enjoy in exchange for an honest review so <laughs> we're gonna just get all through it so quickly before I get too in-depth with it I do want to mention this right here I in my entire life have only emailed two authors and the reason I emailed these two authors was because they specifically said out front that they had arcs and were looking for reviewers for their arcs I would personally not recommend emailing authors unless they state something like that just because authors usually aren't the ones to really handle ARC copies. That's usually the publication company. So if you're looking for an ARC copy, try not to sort of hassle um, the authors. I would just look directly towards the publication company and try to figure out their email and stuff like that. Now contacting publication companies can get a little bit more difficult just because research is so important and it's probably the hardest part besides the wait period to the whole contacting publication companies. So step number one is to find a book you want to read and review. Like I said, reviews should always be honest. That's what it is intended for. But yeah, search around, try to find an arc you want. And then step number two is to figure out the publication company that is actually producing and printing the book you have in mind. I'm going to leave down below the description box some emails I personally use from publication companies. Some I have sort of collected. Certain publication companies don't actually have emails. One that is coming to mind right now is Penguin Teen. They actually have these forums that you fill out and then you can sort of customize which arcs you want to receive. I think Epic Reads does the exact same thing. I'll leave what I'm talking about down below in the description box. And as time goes by, and maybe these emails might be old and stuff like that, I will try to keep the description box as accurate and up-to-date as possible. If it's not, just leave me a little comment later on and stuff like that. I want to give you guys the best information because I know for me personally, I was so lost when it came to this stuff. So I definitely want to help you guys out as much as I can. So let's say you have a book in mind, you already have the exact email, you can email the publication company. Let's get on to what you should state in your email. For me, I like to keep things very brief but very informative. I think that's the best way. And a little tip I have, I have a bunch of little tips, but a little tip I have is the signature should be a really informative part. So I already have a sort of automatic signature what it really says is like sincerely Jacqueline parentheses J book lover and then I have my links and it's really important to have those because they could actually be very crucial because sometimes in an email I'm not really mentioning my Twitter or my Goodreads but having them listed underneath my signature along with my channel can really sort of help sort of push along the possibility of maybe me getting approved for an art copy. So what exactly do I say in the emails I am sending out? So this is just a little tippet version. It's not like exactly word for word what I say. I might have a little bit more information in there, but it's definitely something that you can sort of backbone for your own email. The first thing I sort of start off is with a greeting. I think that is totally polite. I always do that. I will either say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on the time of day. 
I'll then go into my name stating I am a booktuber and then my channel name in parentheses following my channel name I will have my channel link going on from that I will give statistics so I will talk about the amount of subscribers I have the types of videos I do and the views I get on these videos and I will specifically talk about the views I get on my review videos a little tip I have is to actually include a review video for a book that is from that exact same publication company you are emailing I have done this in the past I've gotten some positive feedback from doing this and I feel like this is such a great way to not only show off exactly what you would be doing if you received that book but also you're sort of showing off the fact you are promoting their company anyway and I feel like this is a great way to sort of make them want to send you an ARC. Yet again, I've gotten positive feedback from doing this, so why not give it a try? Following these statistics, I will go on to say something like, I'm contacting you today in regards of me potentially reviewing this said book by this said author. I'll go on to say why I want to read the book. And then following that, I know some people aren't about this. I have always done this. I've never had a negative response from doing this and that is including my address. I'm not saying you have to include your address. It is you that is emailing this publication company so you had to decide that for yourself. Yet again, I've never had a negative feedback from doing it and the reason I actually do it is just because the potential of getting a response back is so low. So I'd rather just put all the information I have to give anyone in an email, send it off. Sometimes I get a response, sometimes I don't. For example, I sent an email out for Roseblood. I did include my address. I never got a response back but I did actually receive this in the mail. So yet again, it is your own personal decision whether or not you wanna include your address. After I include my address, I probably will wrap things off and then sign off with my automatic sort of signature, which yet again includes my social media links along with my channel yet again featured. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a lot of information, but I really learned so much about ARCs and everything like that this past year in 2016, and I wanted to just share that information with you guys. So if you do have any additional like comments or questions, leave them in the comment section. I will definitely answer them as soon as I can. But that's all I have. I'll see you guys later. Bye!